the entire time. The chief CAO has been down there any number of times. Alan Rothen, who is our event planner, has been made point from the city, who has been most accommodating. Uh, they got toilet toilets down there last weekend. Uh, 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 could have taken them out the next week, chose not to. Uh, was scheduled to empty them once a week. He's opted to empty them twice a week. They have been most accommodating. Uh, what this paper aims to do uh, is to get two sides out of our mind. One, uh, the police are required to enforce law. And uh, they're trying to be uh, uh, somewhat restrained uh, uh, while you've got a, a group of folk who are dedicated to a cause who I believe to all of our benefit, to all of our benefit, stand there in that place to remind us that this economy is out of whack. That America, economic justice is out of balance. That in fact it didn't get there overnight. And we've all sat there while Robert Barnes have literally ripped off the economy, scooped the hand down right into the top of the economy and ripped us all off. We're all struggling. When I see uh, uh, statistics that show us that uh, working class Americans have not uh, had an increase in, in, in wages and real dollars adjusted for inflation for 30 years, but those at the top 5% have had 335% increase. That's, that's an abomination. When I learned this from a report from CBO last week, that half of the 300 million people in America are, are making $27,000 or below, that's a astounding figure. It's huge imbalance, yet we all sat there and watched that happen. Finally, somebody, somebody have come forward to say not only here, but in cities all over the country, and yes, all over the world, enough is enough. And how else do you get that message out? Unless you take a stand, a physical stand, to peaceful speech. They have harmed nothing. They have, they have chalked up the wall. And just yesterday morning, they had a cleaning party and washed the wall down, the chalk that was on the wall. Uh, they keep the place neat and clean. Uh, and I'm, I'm just asking that if we can avoid a Kent State, or God knows some, some unimaginable event uh, uh, by simply expressing and following our good senses, and our good conscience uh, in forbearance to avoid that while promoting free speech and, and uh, it, its very power in this United States of America. I, I, I'm telling you, talking to those military folks uh, really touched me because they, I was in the Army myself, Mr. Connor. Uh, but that was in Vietnam when they had the draft. I didn't go to combat either. But this is an all-volunteer army. We scooped these people out of National Guards, took them away from their jobs, sent them over there three and four and five times, and they come back and they can't get reemployed because the business doesn't exist anymore. Come on, y'all. We need to tell America you need to give yourself another start because our whole system is out of life. That's all they say. That's all they want to say. That's all they've done. I urge you, I urge you to pass this resolution while the administration and, and we, we are the governing body. We make the laws of the city attorney who says that state gives us authority over our land. So yes, we can change the law about what uh, a town uh, folk can be 
in that law. We can change the law in terms of encampment. Uh, yes, we have to do it in a way that applies to everybody. And so, yeah, if, 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 if the 1% ordered to the camp out of the bar, they'd have to do something. <laughs> or, or, or if the tea party wanted to do it, or whomever. But the fact is, we need to promote the First Amendment and free speech and not dog it by dogging our folks who choose to take the stand. I urge you to support. Thank you, Mr. Bill. I just want to make it straight. I know applause. I just want to make it straight that what you were asking us to do is to expedite a paper where the United, the uh, Richmond City Council resolves that they agree completely with this group's philosophy. No, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking that, that, that we support the mayor's position to exercise. You are asking in this paper that we, the city council, that we will expedite this paper because um, let's see, the consequences and causes of economic crisis are already the very social contract upon which the Constitution of the United States of America was found. So we would concur with that if we pass this resolution. Yeah, correct. correct? We would concur with that, that um, with all of the, the, the positions that this group has taken. And in addition to that, we would ask that we, the administration and the police department would continue the present policy of travel. That is correct, uh, although uh, that's not their position because they have yet to take a position. That's my position, okay. and uh, uh, it is my explanation of why they feel that All right, thank you. I just want to make sure we all know what this paper said. Madam President. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. Councilor Lawrence, you said something that you said the mayor before him. The mayor last week put out a, a press release stating. Um,
So my only reason for expediting it is to put in official words from this council what the mayor has already expressed. And what uh, the police chief and his wonderful people have already honored. Uh, Alan Rothman is here. Uh, he's, I was told that he's the point guy that I should talk with. Uh, these folks, I uh, think, uh, know him. He's down there every day. And uh, he has been most accommodating. If there's any questions to Mr. Rothman, he's here. All right, thank you, Mr. Julius. Thank you, Governor. We're going to have this paper. Uh, Mr. Samuels. Hi, uh, I think we do need to take a vote on this. I'm not sure it's nice to tonight. Any ordinance resolution that could have an impact on free speech needs to be carefully, carefully evaluated. And this is perhaps as good as time as I need to discuss that, including what the ordinances that we're being asked to suspend do, and what the impact on free speech this resolution and this ordinance have. Ordinances regarding free speech have to meet certain criteria. They have to be content neutral. They have to clearly and narrowly, uh, excuse me, be clearly and narrowly drawn. They cannot give undue discretion to the government. They cannot regulate more conduct than is necessary to serve the government interests. And in this case, one of the significant interests of the ordinance that we're asking to suspend involve public safety and the interests of public safety. The jurisdictions like Richmond can place reasonable time, place, or manner restrictions on speech, even if that speech takes place in the public forum. If you choose to do so, uh, which council has done for decades, then uh, we can pass reasonable time, manner, and place restrictions uh, on speech. If we do, it has to be able to pass the three tests, which we talked about, content neutral, allow ample alternative channels for communication. It has to be narrowly tailored to serve a significant government interest. The laws that we're talking about suspending do not attempt to, su to suppress free speech over a disagreement on the message. These laws are unrelated to the content of the speech. And so there's no real problem with that first prong of what we have to consider when looking at this type of suspension of these ordinances or the ordinances themselves. If there's ample alternative, alternatives to the limits on speech, such as limits on time or location, then the ordinance is still facially valid and constitutional. The current ordinances don't so severely limit a speaker that no other means of expression uh, or no adequate means of expression are available. In fact, everything that's being done could continue to be done with the exception of you know, pitching the tents and staying in the park every night. And the third prong is to consider whether or not the ordinance is narrowly tailored to serve a government's legitimate interest. And here the question boils down to, is the ordinance promoting a substantial government interest that would be achieved less effectively absent regulation? When you're talking about public safety, I think absolutely it would. Here, the safety of those who visit the park, the need to ensure the safety of those who utilize public property, and the need to protect the taxpayer citizen from costly lawsuits that could occur for injuries in the park are all very compelling reasons. So the ordinances that we're talking about, uh, the tents, overnight guests in parks, those kinds of things, appear to easily pass the constitutional test. So the next issue is what's the right thing to do? Should we selectively enforce laws, or should we apply them even? even? And this resolution is asking to selectively enforce, rather selectively not enforce valid, constitutional, specific laws. When I proposed the sound ordinance, I was told by many folks that you got to make sure you don't selectively enforce the law. That it has to be enforced even in this across the entire city. And I don't see many of the people who were involved in the process of denial of laws, but were some of the folks that were telling me. And I want you all to know, regardless of whether or not I agree, I do listen. And I've heard what those folks said regarding selective enforcement. I don't think we should now ignore their comments and the folks who comment about selective enforcement because we're discussing a different ordinance. It's still the same. We have to apply the ordinances to the candidate or we have chaos. Because the laws here are discussed are constitutional, because they're there to protect and not to hinder, and because we must enforce laws in an even-handed way, I'm a little leery to 
the support of paper that would set a precedent of ignoring laws because we like the message of what uh, folks are saying. I think to do so means that we're setting a precedent to ignore laws we don't like at other times, or that are inconvenient at specific times, but we want them enforced the rest of the time. And because we're asking to expedite this paper, and because of the constitutional issues that I just brought up, I want to make sure that everybody understands what we're talking about, what we're really voting on, before we make a rush to judgment. I think we should carefully review this resolution, and I think that uh, we need to understand what the ramifications are prior to taking a vote on it. That's a very long-winded way of saying, I think that it's important to protect free speech. I think it's important to protect the public safety. But I think we need to do it in a timely and considerate way, and deliberate way, as opposed to Russian to Germany. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. The second is to do this bill. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, my remarks are prepared as uh, Mr. Sanders, but I'll, I'll try to put them forward uh, quickly. The nine of us and the mayor took a oath here to uphold the Constitution and the uh, Virginia and the United States by virtue of their own charter of the laws of the city. And it seems like to me that we have been put in an untenable position of, uh, of trying to go around that. Uh, I call upon the administration to uh, make a change on this as quickly as possible, either propose a change or work something out with this group. Uh, this is a legislative body who passed laws and, uh, and we do pass resolutions. It's up to the administration to enforce those laws. And I would uh, anticipate and hope that they would get to that as soon as possible. Uh, it seems like to me that though we have to, to equitably uh, enforce this law, all of us, and to show uh, favor to one group, uh, regardless of whether we agree with their message or not, is just, uh, is just not appropriate. And as I said, I resent being put in this position, and I'd like to see the administration do their job, for which they are paid, uh, to to bring this matter uh, to a close. It would seem to me that we have round the clock uh, protests here uh, without an encampment. Uh, there are plenty of public spaces for people to protest. I'd like. The, I believe there is an application in here, uh, but again, I don't like to put in the position of, of uh, the legislature trying to get into the administration of laws. That's not our duty, and I would expect that uh, the administration to, to, uh, to continue to try and work with this group, but let's, let's try and make something lawful work. And, not ask the legislature to give a special uh, exemption from one group over another. Uh, and I hope that we can, uh, we, I'll be happy to discuss this matter further. Uh, I happen to have great concerns uh, about the income inequity in our country. It is uh, disgraceful. And I do believe that the, that the bottom line of this situation is that people better um, remember the words of Bob Dylan that when you've got nothing, you've got nothing to lose. And it would seem to me that we do need some changes, uh, well, to recreate and expand the middle class in this country. Uh, and I hope we get some solid proposals to do that. Uh, I haven't heard those necessarily, but, uh, but I am looking forward uh, to peaceful protests, peaceful and lawful protests, uh, are always involved in our city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huffman. I'm going to get back to this Mr. Jewell, but I'm allowing other people to speak to people. Sure.
questions that I had, I found to have been um, one that this council should, that I, not the council, I'll speak for myself, um, that I felt some of the issues that were addressed and some of the issues that were being spoke about, some of the changes that needs to be done in the Eastern United States. Certainly, in many cases, a lot of the folk that I talked to were students uh, of, and many of them were students of our local universities here in the city. And some of the greatest accomplishments in human rights that have come about have come about when students come together in a meaningful and organized way to create a voice that has not been heard. And so I think we are facing an era that we are going to see a lot more organization among uh, young professionals, young adults, uh, college students, some of, our, uh, some of us that have been around for a lot longer, like Mrs. Ted Byrne uh, as well. Um, but, you know, I, I, one of the things that I expressed to these young people and all of the other ones, all of us young people, is that, you know, it is important that we work together, that we allow you an opportunity to have a voice, and that you are allowed to be able to have a voice that is heard. But when there is violations of ordinances that the city has, that we are responsible and we're required to carry out, that there has to be other ways that we work together to meet your objective, come to that means of end and yet stand by and abide by the laws that we have to be accountable for for the protection of everyone and to make sure that everyone has the right to have a voice. Um, while I was there, I pointed out some of the things that, that we were extremely concerned about is from a safety perspective and some of that was, you know, in the street uh, some of it was getting people to stop in the middle of the street illegally. Um, and there were lots of other kinds of activities as well. And there, I thought I left there with a mutual agreement and understanding that this city council was going to have a conversation as it goes to the voice, and, and we feel very strongly that the voice needs to be heard. But we also want it to be done in any way that is lawful and that also provides the level of security and protection that, has, that needs to be provided for the benefit of all. And I think that the mayor has demonstrated that by the action that he has taken to have the spirit of grace that we may come to that point. And I believe that it's possible that we can get there. I think the paper that Mr. Jewell has put before us put the issue on the, on the, on the docket or the right kind of discussion to be had. Um, however, I agree that I don't think this is something that we should expedite. I really do think this is a conversation that we need to have and that we need to work out in a process that works well. My understanding from the communication that I had Friday is that there is a um, council liaison committee that has been established for the purpose of having those kind of conversations. Uh, I think that speaks volume to the rec recognizing that it is necessary that that type of conversation be had. And what I would prefer that we do is to take this paper through the process so that we can have those kinds of communication. Thank you, Madam Thank you, Mr. Robertson. Is there anybody else in this town? I will let you close it out. Mr. Newell. Mr. Thank you, Madam President, Mr. Byron. Um, I would uh, like to say certainly that income and aggravating has and continues to be uh, a major concern for a disproportionately large number of citizens throughout our country. Uh, I think that is uh, well attested to uh, by the presence of the folks here and throughout the U.S. where these protests are underway. However, um, I believe that uh, a full discussion in light of the uh, concerns that have been raised by my colleagues are uh, in order 
uh, we do want to protect um, uh, certain, uh, ensure that there is right to speak and certainly public safety is still an issue of concern for us all that we need to be attentive to. So while um, I'm not in favor of expediting this paper, I'm absolutely in favor of having this discussion through our normal processes going to committee back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I guess we expedited the paper because of our. No, we have not expedited. I, mean, I guess Lori Jewell is for us to expedite the paper because of an email or something that was sent out um, by the mayor to shut them down or get rid of, make them move away. No. Thing is, you don't have to fool with the city hall or get a permit. 
You just have to show up, pick a spot that you can, and a day or so later, the mayor and the police chief will show up to see if you need anything. How cool is that? I'm going to ask my city councilman how many other ordinances no longer in force. What fun. Now, this was a kind of a tongue in cheek discussion, but it, it's, it, it, it hits at the heart of who we are. Um, we are a society of laws. Laws are very clear. Um, it's not our place to choose which laws to follow or not follow. If we do that, then we basically have anarchy. Um, we need to follow the law. For the mayor to not enforce the order, overnight ordinance opens up the city to an uncertain future. Uh, what will we do when a neo-Nazi group shows up and peacefully occupies another part? Will we as be as accommodating and, and, and feel as warm and feel as good about it? No, we won't. But we've now put ourselves in a position where we have now had selective enforcement. And that's unfortunate because the burden falls on the 2,000 plus, 200,000 plus residents that reside in the city. Um, we, cannot, we cannot select what laws we want to follow. We should be following all laws. Um, canal should cannot put it. You should have never been allowed to occupy the park uh, without proper permits. And now we are in a precarious position because of it. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. All right. Um, Bill, we'll give you a If you would be so kind as to take about two minutes to close this out. You bet we have lots of uh, chance to talk about I don't think it'll take that long. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to withdraw my motion. The objective to have this matter heard publicly uh, rationally has been met. Um, uh, the other objective. Um, I think uh, Mr. Sam has got to help us by getting into that level of specificity. Uh, uh, this is a resolution expressing the Census Council. I expect to introduce an ordinance uh, by which we can discuss, and you all might want to input specificity. Uh, you see, we happen to be the government body of who controls our land. And while I'm not talking about uh, breaking the law or necessarily feeling the law or necessarily suspending the law. I'm saying we can make new laws. And it just seems to me that it's a matter of will. And if we understand the interest behind all of this uh, and how uh, that person made that, that Mr. Tyler read from may have been one of the ones who said, we don't know the fact of the matter is everyone should have equal access uh, and equal protection under the law. We understand that. So whatever gets crafted will be crafted within that context. Hopefully with your input. Uh, but certainly the very uh, the very the very outcome that we want to avoid would be the very eventuality if we uh, uh, leave our law enforcement officers in the carry situation, city administration is trying to be uh, for America while at the same time that tension exists. Uh, and we can remove the tension uh, uh, whether we agree or disagree with the, with the speech, uh, with the effort as long as they're uh, peaceful and keep the peace and keep the law. Otherwise, we ought to try to make that adjustment. Uh, uh, we've never been here before, not in my lifetime. Uh, we, we're looking at an economic environment that nobody living that I know has ever experienced. And where it impacts us the most are those down on the bottom of the economic ladder. And those above it and the higher you go above it are utterly immune to the pain, have no sense of the pain. And without a sense of the pain, nothing ever gets done. And so this is all we got going big time. This is all we got. No one else is standing up saying enough. And until that happens, then we all go down and rest. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Jones. I, you, you're I withdrawing your motion to I withdraw the paper. I withdraw the motion to expedite okay. that the paper can that the paper can be introduced uh, in regular order. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.